Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with the best baked rice and beans. That's where I do to certain recent worldwide events. I've been getting a lot of requests for easy, hearty recipes that can be made using basic dry and canned ingredients. And this incredibly delicious Spanish style baked rice and beans is all that and more. Way more. You're also going to see a fantastic and foolproof technique for making perfect rice every time, which is important for more than culinary reasons. All right, there are just so many things we can't control right now. It feels good to work with something we can. So with that, let's go ahead and get started by dumping some white rice into a casserole dish. And while this recipe is designed for pretty much any long grain white rice, I'm actually using a variety called basmati, which if you can find works especially well with this. And then as far as seasonings go, we will add some salt as well as some freshly ground black pepper, some ground cumin, some chili powder, or if you want just some paprika. We'll definitely also want a little bit of cayenne, or in my case, a lot of cayenne. And then last but not least, some dry oregano. And then once all that's in there, we will pour in the key to this whole operation, about a quarter cup of olive oil. And we'll go ahead and take a freakishly small wooden spoon and stir all that together. And by the way, if you wanted, you could also use melted butter here as it will have the same effect, or any liquefied fat for that matter. Okay, so that's up to you. I mean, you are, after all, the princess grace of cooking while sheltering in place. But no matter what you use here, the key is to keep stirring and mixing until every single grain of rice is coated. And as you'll see later, that's what's gonna help us achieve such a beautiful texture. So like I said, we'll go ahead and stir that until those grains are thoroughly coated, at which point we'll move on to the wet ingredients including a 16 ounce jar of your favorite tomato salsa. And we don't need any fancy expensive brands here. Okay, pretty much anything will work. And I think the one I used included some roasted green chilies. Although I'm not really sure, since I was kind of scared to look at the ingredients. And then to that we will add a couple cups of chicken broth, which of course we will use to rinse out whatever we transferred our salsa in with, so as not to waste. And then we will finish up with a couple cans of drained red kidney beans. Or, of course, the canned beans of your choice. All right, pinto beans would be great, as would black beans. And then what we'll do once we have all that stirred together, and as equally distributed as possible, is go ahead and cover this very, very, very tightly with some heavy-duty foil. And if you're going to use the cheaper non-heavy-duty foil, make sure you use a few pieces. And I know what some of you are thinking. In times like these, shouldn't we save that foil in case we have to make hats? No, trust me, those don't work. And one of the huge keys to this recipe is getting this covered nice and tightly. Otherwise, too much of our liquid could evaporate in the oven. Which, by the way, is our next stop. So once that's wrapped, we'll go ahead and transfer this into the center of a 350 degree oven for about an hour and 10 minutes. Or until it looks like this. Actually, hold on while I unwrap this. Or until it looks like this. And then what we'll do once this is unwrapped is perform the old fork and fluff where we take a fork and break all this up by sort of going underneath and turning the rice over the top and then breaking up the clumps. And this maneuver is doing two very important things. Okay, it's releasing a tremendous amount of heat so that our rice stops cooking, but it's also breaking up large clumps of rice into perfectly separated individual grains. And once that was done, I went ahead and gave it a taste to see how I did, which reminds me of a tip. Once you unwrap this, Taste a little bit to make sure the rice is cooked before you give it the old fork and fluff. Because if it's not, you can always rewrap it and pop it back in the oven. But I could tell through experience as I was stirring mine, it was fine. So the texture was spot on, and it was also perfectly seasoned and incredibly delicious. So I moved on to final service and garnished with a little bit of chopped cilantro. Right, just because you're in the middle of a pandemic does not mean you can forget about presentation. And by the way, once all the parsley and rest of the herbs are gone at the store, there will always be a few bunches of cilantro left. And then once herbed, I went in for another taste, mostly so I could show off the magic of coating that rice with the oil before we bake it. Okay, because while these grains of rice still have a little bit of starchiness on the surface, by coating them in that fat, our rice is way less likely to stick together and get all clumpy. So I've always considered this one of the easiest and most foolproof methods for making rice. But anyway, after eating out of the dish for a little bit, I decided to serve some up in a bowl, and I went ahead and garnished with some Monterey Jack cheese, and a little dollop of sour cream, and a little more chopped cilantro. And while this would obviously make an incredible side dish, served like this, it really does eat like a meal. And one really interesting thing about this recipe, because we used a relatively small amount of liquid for the amount of rice, I think a little bit of moisture has been pulled out of the bean, 
and they seem to take on a meatier taste and texture. And when I say meatier, I'm referring to taste like meat, and not like one of those big rocks that hits the earth, causing the next worldwide situation. But anyway, that's it. What I'm calling and think is the best baked rice and beans. So simple, so easy, so delicious. And the kind of food that makes everything seem a little less scary. So for all those reasons and more, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.